Hey, what's up guys? It's Will from Mikey's RC. Well, you have to know it was inevitable. Multi-rotors are the it thing right now in RC, and even in the regular media with toys like the AR drone getting in the news. So with all that, and me being into scratch building, this was the result. Now I know some of you guys are going to laugh at this frame, and that's part of the reason I built it. No, but seriously, I really wanted to start flying around more aggressively, and I was a little worried uh, flying around my nice hover things uh, frame here. It's probably about $100 for this frame. And I also didn't want to fly this around and ruin my nice uh, UFO O-ring copter design that I made. And it was just kind of curious to see how it would turn out, building a quadcopter frame out of foam board. So I came up with this. It's a really light, really cheap, easy to build and repair quadcopter frame. Now the total weight of this ready to fly with a 2200 milliamp hour battery is over 100 grams less than my hover things frame. And this is already a lightweight frame. Plus if I crash this, I don't really have to worry. I can either fix it with some foam board and hot glue, or if I want to build a whole brand new frame, it only costs me about five bucks and I can do it in a couple hours. Now the construction for this frame is really simple. It's four foam board square tubes. So you take a piece of foam board, do four slices in it, about seven eighths of an inch apart, and then you wrap it around in a square and you glue that down the seam. And then in the center section here, it's about two inches wide, again with the same seven eighths of an inch thick. And then lastly, I've got a flight control tower up here, which holds my flight control board. It also allows me to put the battery anywhere that I want to along this center section of the frame. And the cool thing about that is that it's really great for FPV. On this quadcopter, if I put my camera on it, as I'm flying, the propellers are basically in view of the camera. And on this kind of a frame, it enables me to put the uh, FPV camera or just a camera that you're recording with farther forward, and that basically keeps the, uh, the view of the propellers out of view of the camera. And so with this design, which is just like my O-copter here, gives you the ability to put the FPV camera up front and then your main flight battery anywhere you want on the rest of the frame and that way you can nicely balance out all the weight. Okay, now I'm going to briefly talk about some of the parts that I used on this quadcopter, what I think you should get and what I think you should stay away from, at least based on the parts that I got. Now obviously we started out with foam board, got about one sheet's worth so that's a buck of foam board. Then I used a yardstick for the motor mounts and a little bit of strengthening up the frame. It's about three bucks at your, your local hardware store. Uh, then I got about 50 cents worth or so of popsicle sticks to add a little bit of extra support all around the frame. And then of course, I don't know, 10 cents worth of packing tape. Now as far as the parts, I pretty much got everything from Hobby King this time. And uh, so let's go down a run down here. Um, these motors are the uh, AeroDrive, they're the 2830, uh, 1130 kV. Now these motors, when I first put them on, really nice. Um, when I was doing a little flight testing, I came down kind of a hard landing. And after that, three out of the four motors started to sound like they had rocks in them. Took them apart, I found that uh, they loosen up a little bit, there's a C-clip in there, and on a hard landing, if the motor gets jolted around, it kind of makes things a little sloppy in there. And now, as you might hear in the, in the video when this starts flying, sounds like there's rocks in some of the, uh, the motors. So, I don't think I'll use these motors. Um, the motors that I have on my O-ring copter here that I designed, these are also Turnagy or Turnagy Aero Drives, uh, 2830s, 1100 kV. I would recommend these motors over these other ones that I got here. I'm not going to put links uh, to these ones because again I think you should stay away from them but anyway just so you know that's what I got. Uh, these motors are about uh, $18 each the total for four was 72 bucks. Then I've got some Turnigy 20 amp ESC's in here. You can see it there and uh, so far I like those. I don't know I haven't had any problems but I haven't done a lot of flight testing. Uh, those were only $9 each so that's $36 for the ESC's. Um, then I got this power distribution board. It's a little hard to see because it's kind of buried inside the frame here, but I definitely recommend getting one of these. One of the things I don't like doing when I'm building my RC aircraft is spending a lot of time doing soldering and wiring. This is a must-have, is these power distribution boards. Um, with just a little bit of soldering bullet connectors on, you can plug all your ESCs right in there. You're ready to go. This one already comes with a battery um, cable on it, so it'll plug right into your battery. This power distribution board is only four bucks. Of course, you get your, uh, your regular 2200 milliamp hour, 25C or so, uh, LiPo battery, those are like $9, something like that. Uh, then you've got your um, flight control board. Now, if you're getting just getting into quadcopters, um, I highly recommend getting this KK2 board. Um, now, this hover things has the Adreno or Quadrino. Basically, it uses some of the multi wii technology in it. But the problem with the flight control board on this is that you have to plug it into your computer to adjust the settings, and that's not fun. This KK2 board comes with a backlit LCD screen 
all the buttons right here on the board itself allow you to uh, make any of the changes you'll need to make on it. That enables you to make changes out at the field where you fly without having to bring your laptop computer, and that's really nice. Now, so far the settings I've got on this KK2 board are okay. It flies nice and stable. I haven't set up my auto level feature yet, but in terms of general flight characteristics and ease of setup and use, you gotta get this KK2 board. 30 bucks, it's a steal. To total this all up, uh, plus a little bit extra for the props, you're looking around $160 for a uh, for a quadcopter that flies real nice. This thing is really light. It handles like a Ferrari compared to uh, this one. This is, uh, with the battery on it, it's probably about 1,100 grams. It's kind of heavy. This one, the total weight is like 840 grams, I think. So I'm going to stop talking now. We're going to put this up in the air and let you guys take a look and see how it flies. All right, so here we go. This lifts right off. Hardly takes any throttle being so lightweight like this. I've got my timer set for about six minutes of flight time, but I'm sure it'll fly longer than that. All right, let's do a little vertical test for you. Show how, how much of a performer it is with this lightweight frame. Right up. That was not even full throttle. I don't even want to do full throttle. It's going to get too far away from me too fast. I need to get some more high performance settings going on this KK2 board. I've seen people do it. So I know the board is capable of really aggressive flight. Can't wait to do some FPV with this thing. I even got some LEDs on there, some leftovers from my UFO copter that I made. It's kind of cool at night. And there you have it the foam board quadcopter frame.